Hard times have fallen on Snack City as of late. We're in a recession, get off my back. All that remains are some french fries and popcorn chicken. But today, Snack City's making the comeback of the century with the help of Zwilling and the Fresh and Safe Vacuum System, the sponsor of today's video. I like to build Snack City with some kind of protein, something snacky, and then something sweet so I can meet all of my needs. Today, we're gonna make some jalapeno cheddar broccoli bites, some chicken fries, and some chocolate chip protein pancake bites. So let's get to snacking. Now you don't have to prep all three of these at the same time, and if you're short on freezer space, you probably won't be able to. The broccoli bites and pancake bites are both super easy and can be prepped together in a breeze. The spicy chicken fries require a bit more work, so let's start with those. Into a large bowl, add four pounds or 1.8 kilos of ground chicken. Ground chicken thighs are preferred, but I'm using breasts here because that's what they sell at my store, and I really didn't feel like grinding my own chicken today. Next, add in one and a half teaspoons or nine grams of salt, two teaspoons or four grams of pepper, two teaspoons or six grams each of garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika, then one and a half teaspoons or 4.5 grams of cayenne pepper. Mix all the seasonings into the chicken so that they are well distributed throughout the meat. It's going to be easiest to get your hands dirty and become one with the chicken. Next, line a 17 inch by 11 inch sheet pan with some parchment paper. The easiest and best way to do this is to tear off a sheet pan sized piece of parchment and then crumple it up in your hands to create a bunch of folds that will help it lie flat. Lay the parchment down flat onto the sheet pan and dump the chicken into the center. Check out how much this chicken looks like a brain. Sick. You're going to spread the chicken into all the corners of the pan. Dunking your fingers into a bit of water first will help to prevent the chicken from sticking. The reason we are using a 17 by 11 sheet pan is because I have found that four pounds of chicken spread into all the corners makes a good thickness for a chicken fry and this is the easiest way to form them for speed. This sheet pan is going to go into the freezer so that we can then cut them into shape instead of having to form them by hand one at a time. Do your best to make sure you have an even layer of chicken and continue to spread it out until you do. Then you can move this sheet pan into the freezer and move on with your day or the rest of your prep until these have solidified enough to cut. For the breading on the chicken fries, I use ground corn check cereal that I make by putting it into the blender. You can use corn flakes or breadcrumbs as well. For the egg wash, crack two eggs into a bowl and add about two tablespoons or 30 grams of water to thin it out. Then you can add in a fourth of a cup or 60 grams of the hot sauce of your choice. I think Louisiana hot sauce or buffalo sauce are the best for this kind of application, so if you choose something spicier, you might want to tone it down a bit. Beat the eggs and the hot sauce together, then you can store this in your fridge until the chicken is ready to be breaded. While I'm waiting for the chicken, I can start on the jalapeno cheddar broccoli bites. Take 2 pounds or 908 grams of frozen broccoli and microwave it until it is thawed. It doesn't need to be cooked or even hot, just soft enough to chop. While that is in the microwave, I'm going to cut one half of a medium onion or 100 grams worth into a small dice and do the same with three medium sized jalapenos or 90 grams. Usually when I make these broccoli bites, I'll toss the ingredients into a food processor in a couple of batches to chop it all up. But I realize not all of you have food processors, so I'm going to show you how you can outsmart the vegetables and just do it by hand with a knife. I like to chop up the broccoli first into smaller pieces to make it easier to incorporate into the remainder of the ingredients. Once the broccoli is closer in size to the onions and jalapenos, I'll add everything together and dump in one cup or 112 grams of cheddar cheese. Then you just have to keep chop, chop, chopping away until you're absolutely sick of chopping and can't chop for another second, or ideally until you reach a rice consistency. You're shooting for something that resembles this. If you use a food processor, yours is going to be much smoother. Transfer all of the vegetables into a large bowl to mix in the seasonings and form the dough. Add one and a half tablespoons or 12 grams of garlic powder, one and a half teaspoons or nine grams of salt, and two teaspoons or four grams of pepper. Give that a quick mix before adding anything else so that it can be evenly distributed throughout. Next, add in one cup or 120 grams of masa harina. This is nixtamalized corn flour. I use instant masa for this. The brand I like is called Maseka. Give the ingredients another quick mix to coat the vegetables with the masa, and then add in one fourth of a cup or 60 grams of water and stir to form the dough. It may feel like you don't have enough water, but keep stirring before you add any more, and chances are it will start clumping together like you are seeing here. If you have to add more water, do it very sparingly as this will affect the finished product's ability to crisp up. These will be formed in the same way that the chicken fries were. Lay down the parchment, dump out the broccoli mixture, and spread it out into the corners of the pan just like you did with the chicken fries. If you use a sheet pan that is similar in size to mine, you will end up with broccoli bites that are about one fourth of an inch in thickness, which will crisp up nicely in the air fryer. If you use a smaller pan, they'll be too thick and you won't get the crisp end product after reheating in the air fryer. Once you have a level surface and the broccoli spread into all corners, you can move this pan into the freezer as well to be frozen to prepare for slicing. Remember, you're the mayor of Snack City. If you don't have room to fit both of these pans, you'll have to do some city planning. Every booming metropolis in modern history knows you have to expand to the skies, so you may need to play engineer and start building upwards. There we go, problem solved.
I've made these chocolate chip protein pancake bites in a couple of videos here on this channel. So I'm gonna kind of breeze by this. If you wanna watch the full recipe video for these, I'll put a link in the description. I made 48 of them today, which requires 200 grams of oat flour, 60 grams of cornstarch, 60 grams of vanilla casein protein powder, and eight grams of baking powder. Then for the wet ingredients, it's 250 grams of liquid egg whites and 300 grams of water. Lastly, I toss in about 40 grams of mini chocolate chips and stir until the batter is formed. That batter gets transferred over into an oiled mini muffin tin and baked at 325 Fahrenheit or 163 Celsius for 10 to 15 minutes. After they have set in the center, they can be pulled from the oven and set aside to cool. And now once your chicken pan is frozen solid, you can remove it from the freezer and prepare it to be sliced. I cut it into 64 chicken fries by continuing to cut it in half until I had a slab that was 16 fries wide. Then I cut it in the other direction three times to finish it off. When you're ready to bread, get out two large shallow dishes and add the chicken fries in with one fourth of a cup or 30 grams of cornstarch. I like to put a little on the bottom of the dish first to make it easier to get complete coverage. Toss the fries around until they are lightly coated with the starch. Next, you can dump the egg wash over the top and toss it again to coat each chicken fry. If they aren't frozen solid at this point, they will fall apart during this step, so make sure they are solid before starting this process. In your second pan, add about a cup and a half or 200 grams of ground corn checks, one tablespoon or eight grams of paprika, one teaspoon or three grams of cayenne pepper, and a half teaspoon or about three grams of salt. To bread the chicken fries, drain off any excess egg wash and place them into the pan with the breading. The big shallow dish is nice because it allows you to do a bunch at once without them getting stuck together. Roll them around in the breading, then knock off any excess breading and place them onto a wireline sheet pan. Continue working through the chicken fries until you have them all breaded. Usually when I make these, I cook them in the air fryer, but it obviously takes a good amount of time since the air fryer basket is quite small. I have a convection setting on my oven and I decided to give that a go today so I could cook them all at one time. I sprayed the tops with a bit of oil and then used the convection roast setting at 400 Fahrenheit or 204 Celsius for 20 minutes to cook them. They didn't really crisp up at all, but because I plan to reheat these in the air fryer, that will be fine. While the chicken fries are in the oven, you can cut up the broccoli bites. I made this into 48 bites by cutting it into six rows and eight columns. If these are too frozen to cut, give them a bit of time to thaw out on the counter first before you run the knife through them. When your chicken fries finished, pull them from the oven and allow them to cool. Flash freezing all of these snacks before bagging them up is a good idea. I ended up stacking it all on smaller plates and going to the gym for a couple of hours while it all froze a bit harder. When I returned home from the gym, I bagged them all up to move into Snack City. I used this willing fresh and safe vacuum system to store all my snacks in the freezer. Vacuum sealing the snacks will help them stay fresh for as much as five times longer. These fresh and safe bags are perfect for Snack City because they allow you to open, close, and re-vacuum the bags with ease. I was always hesitant to use vacuum sealers for my snacks because I thought it would be too much work to cut open the plastic and then reseal it, but the zip top on these fresh and safe bags makes it feel the same as a regular zip top bag. I toss my snacks into the bags, seal them up, and then vacuum out all the air with a pump. Zwilling is giving TMPM Nation a deal on the 7-piece Fresh and Safe Vacuum Starter Set when you use the code meal prep at checkout to give you 10 extra medium bags for free. There is a link to this product in the description for you to check out. Shout out to Zwilling for the cool bags. Once all the food is sealed and vacuumed up, I move it into Snack City in my freezer, and let me tell you there is no better sight than seeing a fully stocked freezer with snacks galore. Now let's talk reheating. For the jalapeno cheddar broccoli bites, the air fryer is the way to go to get them crispy. Grab a handful out of the bag and pop them into the air fryer. It may help to spray your basket and the tops of the bites with a little oil first. I air fried these ones at 400 Fahrenheit or 204 Celsius for about 20 minutes and a little over halfway through, I flip them over to the other side. Once they have browned and crisped up to your liking, they are ready to eat. I like to serve mine with a bit of marinara sauce to dip it in. Each one of these jalapeno cheddar broccoli bites has about 26 calories, not counting the sauce, which also isn't very calorie dense. If you reheat these in any way other than the air fryer, you will likely have trouble getting them to crisp up. To reheat the chicken fries, the air fryer is also your best bet for the same reason. Take the frozen chicken fries and throw them into your air fryer basket. Spraying the tops slightly with some oil will help them cook better. As with everything I reheat in the air fryer, these go in at 400 Fahrenheit until they are hot, which will take about five to seven minutes depending on your air fryer and how many you make. I like to serve mine with a bit of ketchup and each of these chicken fries will have about 55 calories and seven grams of protein if you yielded 64 of them. The chocolate chip protein pancake bites get microwave for reheating as I want these to stay soft. Then I top them with some syrup, and I don't want to hear it about how Mrs. Butterworth isn't real maple syrup. I know it's not. It's way better than real maple syrup will ever be, so let's stop pretending like it's not. All in, this snack prep took me about a day to finish, but most of that time is just waiting for things to freeze. I would do a bit of prep, go work for a couple of hours, come back to the kitchen and prep a bit more, then I went to the gym while things finished in the freezer, and when I returned, I completed the process. These should last me for a month or more as long as I don't use them for my meals too often as that really cleans out Snack City fast. Each of the written versions of these recipes will be linked in the description below along with this willing fresh and safe vacuum starter set. Trust me when I say you want to have a freezer full of snacks, so mayor up and start building. See you next week.